But yeah, that's it. Believe it or not, my topic is about what can you feel? Amen. <laughs> Did you feel it? Yes. yes. <laughs> what can you feel? This kind of touch. What can you feel? Did you feel his touch? Yeah. I don't know about you, but this morning I walked in and there were prayer and I felt his touch. Oh yes. I'm just opening up with a story of a mother. And I'm talking about a praying mother. This mother, she had a son, she was a single mom. And Bridget, I don't know what's going on, but somehow this thing here, right here, there's some Holy Ghost up in here. It's like I can't keep still. There's something going on up here. I'm not quite sure what's Amen. happening, but something is happening up here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus. This mother and her son, she's a single mother, and her son believed God. She and her son, they believed God. And yes, she looked after her son, made sure that her son was well dressed, shoes well shined, clothes thick and span, well ironed, everything. Here, cut, he's sharp. Yes. He goes to school, he's a bright lad. Yes, because you know, when the favor of God is upon you, the teachers, I'm a teacher, yeah. they tell you, they said, oh, he's not doing so well. Don't believe them. Don't believe them. Amen. You know you pray for your child. Amen. You know you pray for your child. Don't believe them. Amen. Yes, we are, we've got a script that we've got to say. But you know, when I got my children, when I have my children, I've got some boys. I've got four boys mm. in my class. I call them my boys. And oh, my days. You name it, they do it. <laughs> and let me tell you, when I go in that classroom and I see those boys, I am praying for them. Amen. They don't know that I'm praying for them. Sometimes they say to me, Miss, what are you saying? I said, never you mind. <laughs> so yeah, you pray for your children. You still pray for your children. It doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. So this woman, she prays for her, or her son. And her son is sharp. He believes God. Yes. And he knows the word of God. And it's a single mom. And you know, there's a single moms. Listen, single mothers, keep doing what you're doing. Amen. Your children, they acknowledge. They know. They know the struggle. They know. They know. Children know. And this mother, she kept praying for her son. Till time for him to go to university. And he went off to university abroad. He got a scholarship because he's very bright. Anyway, every year the boy used to write the mom, call the mom, say to the mom, Mom, I'm doing well, mom, you know, everything till after a while. He starts slacking off. She don't hear from him. She hardly hear from him. Till eventually she did hear from him. And then she began to wonder, what's happening? What's going on? I'm not hearing from him. I've got a son. My son is on nearly 30. You say, anytime I don't hear from my son, I said, God! Bring my son. Listen, I don't know my son. And then my son would say, Mom, you've called my name, haven't you? Yes. I said, yes, I have. You need to check in. You need to check in with your mom. And so this woman I haven't heard from her child. She's been praying. She's been calling. She's been two years past the woman hasn't heard from her son. Then one day he turned up at her doorstep. And when he turned up at her doorstep, she didn't recognize him. She didn't recognize who he was. Why? His hair wasn't kept. His shoes wasn't shined. In fact, he had locks. So he didn't look like the son that was left. And then she said, you know, as a mother, you know, you don't, well, some other mother, you don't jump in and say, where you going? Anyway, she calmly said, you know, let's have, a, let's have dinner, and then let's talk. Eventually they talk, and she said, son, what's happened? Explain to me, what's going on? And he said, mom, you see this God that we used to talk about, this God, how do you know it's real? How do you know this God? You know, you know, I don't know, you know, I feel my 
himself now. So, you know, where's God? And the mother tried her best to explain. And she said, I can feel him. I can feel his Holy Spirit. I can feel his presence. When I pray and invite him into my atmosphere, I can feel him. Yes. But being a university student, that went over his head, mm. I think, because, you know, when you're not in that place, it's like you're not listening, you know? Right. Yeah. So in the middle of the night, she heard some moans and groans and, you know, pain, you know, and you're feeling pain and stuff like that. And she's wondering, what's going on? Only to find out that this boy is in pain. So then he said, oh, mom, I'm hurting so bad. So the mom said, oh, you're hurting. How do you know? <laughs> How do you know you're hurting? How do you know you feel the pain? Where is the pain? And he said, mom, I know. Uh -huh. I feel it. Yes. <laughs> it's moving up and down my face. I feel it. And she said, then there you go, son. There it is, son. No, we are on the same way. Yes. Yeah. That is how I know That's right. that he is real. Amen. Yeah. That is how I know because I can feel it. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says, through our experiences and circumstances, God reminds us who we are, whose we are, and what he represents. In Hebrews 14, 15, it talks about him being touched with the feelings of our infirmities. God can empathize with us because he felt he was here. He felt the pain. You know, when I watched the, the Passion for Christ, they, they had two versions. And when I watched the first one, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, the, the beat Christ, yeah, I know the beat Christ, but man, the next one. Mm -hmm. When they show you the graphic detail of what my God had to go through for me, and how he felt all those lashes and those. You know something, give God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And again, I thought Christopher was gonna go into the multitude, <laughs> into the that scripture, Matthew 9, 36, where it talks about the multitude. He was moved with compassion. He felt for the people feelings. What can you feel? His kind of touch. In life, it says a, person's, a, a person expressed six basic feelings. They are happiness, surprise, fear, sadness, disgust, and anger. Obviously, this is dependent on the situation. Anger. One of your feelings, anger. In Genesis 4, 47, Cain and Abel, in the very beginning, Cain and Abel, hmm? Cain was angry. Why? Because God chose Abel's offering and not his. Brethren, so this is a thing called the heart and our emotion. We need to check them all the time. Mm -hmm. I remember one lady said to me, Sister Angie said to me, Auntie, why are you so angry? Mm. And this is the woman of God talking to me now. Listen, so when somebody sees something in you, they can say it to you. Okay? It's not nice sometimes to receive it, I'm not going to lie. But it's because they see something in you. So this woman of God, she said, Audrey, why are you so angry? This is me. But me. <laughs> Who does she think she is? Telling me I'm angry. I said, do I look like I'm angry to you? I'm angry. Really? And she said, that's it. <laughs> that's it right there. And I said, oh my days. And then I went back and you know, these days I've become a very good reflector. Throughout your school life and throughout uni, they, they teach you how to reflect. You can reflect in action and you can reflect on action. You can reflect within the circumstances as it happened to you, you go and you reflect. Or you can go away and you can reflect. 
Either one of them, I'm doing both. Yes. And I reflected on what she said. And you know what? That was a prayer point for me. Anger. How can I get rid of my anger? I said, Sister Brennan! Brennan! It's like barking like a dog. You know what I mean? Somebody says something to you like, I didn't do it. I'm moving. No, that's not what God, that's not what God represents. And here we are, I'm Cain and Abel. Because he wasn't, he, he, God didn't choose him. He get angry. Sometimes we must be glad for God blessing our brethren. Yes. Come on, don't yes. be angry, don't be jealous. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. This little boy in my class, I could tell that he's got anger this position. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he who feels it knows it, didn't he? He who experiences it knows it. Whenever this little boy come to me, he goes, so I would say to him, can you rewrite that for me? There's no capital letters. You made no full stop, there's no finger spin. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, what on earth is wrong with you? I am telling you, there's no full stop, there's no capital letter, you need finger spin. And let me tell you something, it's like, sometimes when he looks at me, and I think, oh my gosh, is he gonna pounce on me? He's so angry. So I'm about to say to the teachers, I'm about to say to them, listen, to do some anger management around this child because it's like he comes in and the way he throws his coat, the way he throws his lunchbox, he's angry. He's angry. Check your emotions, guys. Check our emotions. Anger. God himself also expressed anger when he destroyed the people with the flood. When the stench come up to his nostril, God said, I'm not having any of that in Genesis 6. He said, I'm not having any of that. So there is also righteous anger. Mm. You see somebody doing something and it grates on you. Mm. It's not because you, you vex because them do it. It's because it's not right. Mm. It's not right. God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 18, 20. Again, the stench come up to his nostril. Anger. I've told you about children getting angry. <laughs> Listen, I love this advert. I'm, I'm, I'm visual, you see. <laughs> so, this advert is about this child in the supermarket. You know this child. Oh. He wants something on the yeah. shelf. His mother said no. And this boy throws himself down on the ground. Yeah. 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 And the mother throws himself down on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you have to beat them at the old days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Anger. Hallelujah. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, David again expressed great anger. And why did David express this anger? Imagine, the prophet Nathan says, there was a man, a rich man and a poor man. The rich man had everything and, and the poor man had one. And the rich man said, because I'm rich, I'll have that too. Mm. And, and, and the poor man lost. And David said, that man should die. <laughs> he should die. <laughs> be careful, Bridget. That's right. I could have been one of those birds. <laughs> and after David said, he should die, Nathan said to him, well, actually, <laughs> that rich man is you, David. And the poor man is Uriah, and him having one wife, and you have a whole harem. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And David said, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So he's expressing anger for something that he, he is the culprit of. Yes. Huh? Guys, sometimes we need to check our, our emotion. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he owned up to his wrongdoing. After that, David recognized the condition of his heart. What can we feel? Sadness. This one is a particularly big one, kind of. Because our queen is not here anymore. And you know what, Bridget? I honestly didn't think it would affect me that much. But 
yesterday I went into school and um, normally we plan our midterm curriculum. We were going to do something in history and, you know, and all of a sudden there's this emergency meeting where they have to change the whole thing. So instead of us looking at some bits in history, now we're going to look at something to do with the monarchy. And they said this song, um, sing by Gary Barlow. It's about um, some pictures in, you know, African singing and stuff like that. And it broke me. I don't know why it broke me, but it did. And it's like I'm thinking, Virgin, I'm over 50. Believe it or not, I'm over 50. And all my life, this is my culture, the Queen. Yes, fine, I'm not from Britain, but it still affected my country. When the Queen visited my country, we all get excited, we all listening. In fact, my name, Elizabeth, was because of the Queen. And so I took it personal. So yesterday I was so sad. And it's like, no matter how I tried to get out of my sadness, I couldn't. I just couldn't get out my sadness because it just hit me. She's gone. She's, you know, the changes, the stuff, you know. Ah, brethren, sadness. In 2 Samuel 18, David expressed extreme sadness. After realizing that he had sinned, this is after Nathan had spoken to him, and he realized that he had sinned. And he was so sad. He was also sad again in um, Second Samuel. Um, can somebody read this one for me? I want this one read, uh, please. Second Samuel 18, 31 to 33. Second Samuel chapter 18, verse 31. Yes, to 33. And because Cushi came, and Cushi said, Hiding, my lord, the king for their lord, has avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushi, Is the young man Absalom today? And Cushi answered, The enemies of my lord, the king, and all that rise up, uh, rise against thee to do be head, be as that young man head. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept. And as he went, that he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God, I had died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. David expressing great sorrow because one of his sons died. I guess now we can all empathize. We may not have a son, we may not have a personal family member, but we're all mourning because there's a death. Again, David expresses um, his feelings in, can somebody read this one as well for me? 1 Samuel 30, verse 3 to 6. First Samuel 30, verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 3 to 6. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burnt, burnt with fire, and their wives, and their sons, and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And, when, and David's two wives were taken captive, Hanunion, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nebel, the Canaanite. And David was greatly distressed for the people's sake of stoning him. 
because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Amen. Amen. David expressing great sorrow because they've taken his wives. They've done an injustice to him. And we all feel sad in various stages, various times, various, you know, Peter, the greatest betrayal, <coughs> Jesus, he was one of the disciples with Jesus. And yet, when the cup crowed three times, he betrayed Jesus. In Luke 22, 54 to 63. Jesus himself was also sad. <laughs> you know, when they used to say to us in school, uh, no, in, in, um, we used to call them um, Sunday school, and we used to have golden texts. You got the golden text. Yeah, where the children learn Bible scripture and come and compete. Yeah, we used to do that. Yeah. So when they come and say, oh, repeat a scripture, or they said, um, popcorn, yes. get a scripture. My favorite one was Jesus went. <laughs> <laughs> John 11, 35. <laughs> I didn't know the context behind it, but as far as I'm concerned, I've learned it, and that's why. Yeah. <laughs> this was in the context of where Lazarus died. Lazarus died, and Jesus was feeling sad. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah, mm -hmm. Nehemiah was sad because his people, the wall, sometimes we feel sad for people, it's not even ours, but we feel sad as people. Yeah? And then Jeremiah, they call him the weeping prophet. Yeah? Always cry, you know? I'll give you a little. Tell my husband, I'll give you a little peek. My husband, yes, yeah, my husband. When we met, I didn't realize that he was a weeper. So, whenever, like, we're praying and stuff, I'm wondering, why, why, why is he crying? What, what, what's happening? You know, the big man, and because back home, we were taught not to show your emotions. Man must yeah. not cry. Man must be tough and not cry. Yes. So when I came and I saw it, it was strange for me. And I saw my husband, but then the Lord um, sanctified me yeah, to yeah. realize that actually men cry. Yes. And men cry because they're in the presence of God. Sometimes when you're praying and you have no words, mothers, women, Hey, warriors, we know. The moanings and the groanings. As my sister said, the clapping yes. is a weapon. Yes. Mm -hmm. The moaning and groaning is a communication. Yes. Crying, weeping. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jeremiah did. Jeremiah wept, weeping. But then as we cry, we take comfort in knowing that the Lord will comfort us Hallelujah. in due season. Amen. Like right now, we all need comfort. Because for us, yes, the queen is dead, but we still have a risen savior, don't, don't we? Yes. Yes. We still have a risen savior. savior. Our hearts are comforted because of our risen savior. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we don't weep like everybody else because we know that we've got a savior who comforts us. That's right. And we can find strength in sad times. Mm -hmm. The last one I'm gonna leave you with, I think, sir, I didn't realize this was going into this was gonna go into oh I'm good, good time, okay. Yeah. <laughs> because you know I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning, friends, I'm learning. learning. <laughs> what can you feel? Fear. Fear is a biggest contender in a believer's life. Fear. Fear can literally of you. Fear can make you not do stuff. And if you should follow fear, you will not step out there, you will not do anything. Fear. But you notice when the Lord is talking to you, he says, fear not. Mm -hmm. yes. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For 
I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my right hand. Mm -hmm. Fear not. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we are fearful to step out. You know? I was one of them that was crippled with fear. This pastor, I'm telling you, you're a great man. You're a great man to get me to do this. Amen. Normally I would say, no sir, that's not my calling. Mm. Honestly. Yeah, give me the prayer. Mm. Give me the children. Mm. Give me the chairs. Yeah, I'll do anything but not come here and stand. Because I didn't believe that I could do this. Mm. Even becoming a teacher. If somebody had told me. If somebody said, Austin, at 22, when you are your son, you are going to be a teacher. I'd say, come on, get out of here. That's a lie. There's no way I can stand up in front of people. I will give it some, but talk in front? Oh no, not me. Not me. Fear crippled me. And all through my Christian life, and I said to Pastor that he's the one who let me on the pulpit. I never go near pulpits. Mm -mm. I'll go and do praise and worship. Yeah. But when it comes to speaking, not me. Reading out aloud? Oh, God bless this man. Mm -hmm. God bless this husband of mine. Amen. 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 This man pushed me. Amen. Push me to do things I don't want to do. I'm not comfortable to do it. When I was doing the Bible study, and I was when I was doing my research. And I'm trying, I'm trying not to ask him, really? You know, because I really want to do it on my own. I want to, you know. But then certain scriptures are kind of like, and then he went into teacher mode. And I'm like, here you go. That's what the teacher's <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, and I thought, you know what? God is, God is a good, God is a good God. And, but fear, what is stopping you? What is stopping you? Just do it. The only, the only thing that should stop you is the fact that you go, you, do you know what? God loves it when you step out, you know. Even if you are wrong, even if it doesn't work out, step out. Do it. Hallelujah. Do it. Fear cripples us. And 1 Peter 5, verse 7 says, Jesus talks to us and says, cast your cares upon me. Why are we worrying? Then the next scripture, Matthew 6, 25, talks about, do not worry what you eat or drink. No, I am one of those. And the Bible talks about encouraging yourself in scripture and hymns. Hey, listen, you best know some scriptures, you best know some song, because when you don't have them, you're going to need them. Yes. You're going to need them. You're going to need them. You know, my children say, oh, mommy, you always pushing me to do this, you're pushing I said, if I don't push you, who's going to push you? If you don't go there and do it for yourself, how are you going to know? Huh? But what if I get it wrong? I'll give you a story. My daughter is ready to try. Hallelujah! My daughter is learning to drive. And every time she says, Mom, can I drive? Mom, do you want me to drive the car? <laughs> Mom, please let me drive the car. <laughs> Mom, can I drive the car? Well, you know what really stopped me from... Oh, she, she, yeah, I think I have. You know what really stopped me from letting her fear? <laughs> what if she grabs the car? <laughs> <laughs> it's expensive, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> well, I've not seen her drive. I don't know who she is. <laughs> but last week, last week, that, that, that woman and man of God, I'm telling you, you guys are blessed. Yeah, bless you. You're yeah, beautiful yeah, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly. I think Mama Jo said to me, so what? Let her drive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 and I'm thinking, do I let this girl roll the traffic seat? <laughs> but Virgin, I overcame that fear. Mm -hmm. And that was fear that was stopping me. Mm -hmm. We're on the car. Yeah. Joe, we're on the car. I could feel comfortable mm -hmm. to say, well, actually, I can't drive. Mm -hmm. But wait, yes, you can drive. And again, you'll be so proud of me. I allowed her to drive 
to work wow. down the bank, wow. across the main Amen. road. Wow. Wow. Fear stops us from doing a lot of things. What are you fearful of? What is the fear that is in your life? Jesus comforts us, doesn't he? Even when we are fearful. What can you feel? Happiness. And I have to think about this one. We get happy when we hear, yes, they're a gate! What? Yeah. Yes, they get married! Mm -hmm. ah! Oh, she's having a baby! Mm -hmm. We get excited. Mm -hmm. We get happy, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pass my driving test! Yay! Mm -hmm. Pass my exams! Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> we get so happy. But here it is in Acts mm -hmm. 5 41 to 42. Peter and John. They were excited, they were happy, but why were they excited and happy? They've just been beaten. They've just been got <laughs> put into prison. And they said, yay! And I'm like, oh. In, 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 in English, we would say that's, a, that's either oxymoron or a juxtapose because it don't work. How can that be? How can you be? experiencing that and then having that but here we are because they weren't looking at themselves they were looking at pleasing our heavenly father so they could rejoice they could be happy because they were found worthy they were found worthy in luke 15 8 to 10 it talks about this woman and her lost coin Come on, honestly. I'm looking at a pen. One pen. It was one pen. Are you gonna put a one penny? This woman lost her one coin. And when she found it, she rejoiced. She was so happy. But was it about the penny though? It wasn't. It wasn't about the penny. In Psalm 118, can I have this read, please? Psalm 118. I'll tell you what um, what um, thing. I don't remember if it was um, all of it. Psalm 118. Second 18. 118, up to seven, from one to seven. Psalm 118. Verse 1 to 7. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for the Lord is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I call upon the Lord in this day. The Lord answered me and set me in a large way. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man do to me, do unto me. Amen. 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 So here we are rejoicing. Mm. Giving thanks. Mm. Giving glory. Giving adoration mm. to God. And throughout scriptures, there are others, but I've just chosen a few. The three things I would like to leave with you, if you don't take anything else, it is, it's okay to express how you feel. It's okay. Even if it's anger, even if it's fear, even if it's sadness, because we can't all be happy all the time. We can't all rejoice all the time. And you, if you, if you are, if you are expressing sadness and stuff, understand when somebody is expressing happiness because it's where they are, it's what they're experiencing. We don't know what God's done for them. God is the next day. God is interested in our feelings. 
God is very interested in how we feel. We can feel within ourselves, the natural man. But then, God, He feels that too because He was a man. He empathizes. When we sad, He rejoices as well. The Bible talks about there's rejoicing in heaven when a soul goes to God. Yes. That's why the Bible said, he who winneth a soul is wise. Mm -hmm. And my sister was talking about the track. Mm -hmm. You don't have to speak mm -hmm. and know the track. Mm -hmm. Let the track speak. Okay. And the final thing, the third thing is aligning your feelings with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might be feeling that way. But what, what, what does God say? It's okay, you know, I can feel sad. But then when I'm sad, I give it to God. I give it to God. And if it means you have to bow, because you know sometimes we bow. <laughs> we cry. We groan. It's okay. But so long as we align it with God. And he comforts us. So yes, those are the three things. It's okay to express how you feel. God is interested in our feelings. And let us align our feelings with God. Well, I hope my few words have blessed you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.